guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder and I'm here at Salt Lake Barbecue in Driftwood, Texas, just outside of Austin. We're gonna go in and check it out. There's no line, so let's jump in. Dining time will be limited to one and a half hours. Here we go, Joe. Hey, great, how are you? Okay, the atmosphere here is really, really cool. I like the name Driftwood, everything here looks like it's made out of old wood, which is really neat. Full disclosure, we were here a couple days ago and thought we gotta come back and yeah. do a real review. Can we do a half pound of brisket, half pound of rib, and a half pound of sausage, and then we'll do coleslaw, um, and then can we get the bread, pickles, onion? We'll try the bins. Let's do a single serving. Okay, perfect. Oh, we don't have any sauce? I got you. All right, <laughs> excellent. All right, I think we're good then. I'll get that okay. All right, thanks. Okay, so this is our second time here. We were actually driving by the other day and we thought we'd stop in. We were pulling the 1,000 gallon smoker that you can win, by the way, click on the link in the description. We came in and we had some food and we we're like, oh, we should do a real review. So we're back again. The atmosphere here is really cool. They have an incredible meat shrine that we're gonna be sure to show you. I don't think they actually do any of the cooking on that. I, it would be hard to imagine that they would. I think they smoke everything at a different spot, but yeah. then they'll sauce things and then kind of fit it over the fire again. Because they yeah. have all that sauce just hanging from the top yeah. over there. Yeah, and then they have like a complex here. It's not yeah. one building. It's like 10 buildings spread out over multiple acres. If you were ever concerned about parking at a barbecue place, this is the place for you. We pulled in with a thousand gallon pit, parked no problem. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Thank you. And the parking spots are kind of delineated by, it looks like horse hitching racks, yeah. you know? Super old school. One other thing is we've been doing coffee reviews at every place that we stopped. And this coffee, it's kind of a dark roast, not super strong, not craft, artisan, barbecue. No, so good though. <laughs> it's very simple, but if you grew up like drinking Folgers coffee that you snuck from your parents like I did, <laughs> it seems familiar. So I give it a solid 7.2. 8.1. Out of control, Joe. 8.1 coffee. Yeah. So we're gonna... Because I really need it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going to drink our coffee and wait for our food to show up. Sorry, it's a little bit loud in here. We have brisket. We got a half pound of brisket, a half pound of ribs, and a half pound of sausage. Oh, we have three ribs. We have quite a bit of sausage. Last time, all we got was lean brisket. This time, we have a little bit of fatty brisket in there to try. So, I think I'm gonna work my way from this side to that side. Yeah, I'm gonna that's try the sausage. sausage. Oh. It's smokier this time than last time. Yeah, the snap in the casing is better than last time. Yep. Last time, it was pretty just kind of like one texture all the way through. Yeah. Are eating improvements than the last time. Yeah, this is definitely better than last time. Not super flavorful in the sausage itself, but it's good. This reminds me a lot of the sausage I actually grew up eating in Chicago. It reminds me of like a Polish sausage. Yep, exactly. I just don't want to get a Polish sausage lodged in my throat. I had the Polish sausage. <laughs> wow, so much right. better than last time. I'm like kind of surprised because that was our yeah. least favorite thing yeah. and already it's kind of like... Significantly better. improved. Yeah. I will get this Franken rib. Are you a rib tip person? Not really. All right. It's because he's not from Chicago, that's why. How are those bears doing? Wow, you're going to go there, huh? You're going to hurt my I feelings. went there. We're winning the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Joe, if they win the Super Bowl, I don't even know what I'll do. Touchdown Packers! All right, let's try this rib. I get like a grilled flavor. Mm -hmm. I get the sauce. Not really smoky. Properly cooked, though. The smokiness from it is more of a grilled smoke mm -hmm. opposed to like like a low and slow sort of smoke. Agreed. I don't know what it is because it just seems like everything tastes a little more fresh. Yes. Yeah. You know? I mean, even these ribs, like the flavor is a little bit more pronounced than it was last time too. Yep, it's better. The texture of the ribs are, I wouldn't say they're, it's a texture that we're accustomed to cooking to or mm -hmm. eating at other like barbecue restaurants that that they do now, but they're pretty tasty though. I like yeah. the texture of it, yeah. Pretty tasty. A little more chew, but kind of like it. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't write home about it, but it's, it's also good. good though. This is a good looking rib. Yeah, you want a plate? Nah, I don't need a plate. 
I ain't no punk. Alright. I should probably get a plate to put this on. <laughs> Alright, moving on to the brisket. I will try a chunk of lean here. It's got this kind of unrendered fat on one side. It's a little bit, a little bit tough still. This is kind of cut almost like you would expect at like a New York deli. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or it's doesn't really have that like typical sliced brisket look that you would get or what you were, you were traditionally used to getting. The bark is a little bit separating. Mine's a little bit under for sure. Tastes the way it looks. You know, yeah. It's a little bit tougher. Like, you know, when we, everyone kind of talks about like the pot roasty flavor mm -hmm. of brisket or how it can be. That's it. This is kind of what it is. I, I don't, I don't not like the flavor of it. It's no. just not what I'm expecting when I'm going to a barbecue restaurant. Right. I'm expecting it to be packed with flavor. Yeah. I'm expecting kind of a crust on the outside. Right. Especially the way that they kind of cut it and slice it. There's yeah. kind of, it doesn't really have that bark that you would get on a yeah. small slice. And, and there's, there's no consistency to any of these slices. Like here's just a random weird right. chunk. Here's another weird chunk. Here's like some this end cut from... Kind of looks like the mohawk of the... Yeah. Right there. All right, try I'm gonna, fatty? Yep, I gotta try it. Sticky on the outside, I like that. Taste the rub. Definitely more complex than just salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not getting very much black pepper, which I'm missing. Right. The flavor is enjoyable, it's not exactly what I'm expecting. This is kind of the opposite of our last experience, though. Yeah. Where I liked the brisket, didn't really care for the sausage, and the ribs were. The ribs, good. Are, yeah, ribs were in the middle. Yeah. Um, this one. I actually like the sausage a lot. Me too. The ribs were pretty good, yeah. and the brisket's not exactly what I was hoping yeah. for. Yeah, it's not. It's not what we're what we do now. Yeah. Right? We're, but I would not be opposed to eating this at all. Like I still yeah. like the flavor, yeah. but it's just kind of the when we're trying to think about when we're eating barbecue, like what type of barbecue we're trying to yeah. go for. This is know? super old school. You show yeah. up with your family. You know, you get big mounds of meat and you separate it out, you know, 12 different ways. Right. One thing we discovered last time is the real play is you get this bread yeah. and it's the same bread that they use at Cane's. And then you take some meat. I'm going to use some of the lean. You take some meat, you put it on there, a couple pieces of sausage and then some slaw. Madman. You want the spicy or the regular? Hit me with the spicy on this. Oh yeah. And then you sandwich chise it. Messy, but good. Kind of messy, but good. I'm super satisfied. The experience of eating barbecue here is is different than I would do going to Roy and Lewis, Franklin, a nickel weight. I'm not tasting everything like we would typically do. Like if I were to come to Salt Lake, I'm, I'm making a bunch of sandwiches just like that mm -hmm. because I think it eats a lot better too. You know, you're getting a really, really soft bread, crunchy slaw, and the meat that just kind of like brings everything together. And the sauce is different than you would get at typical barbecue restaurants nowadays too. Yeah. Um, and the snap on that case is actually really good. Yeah, it, yeah the sausage is significantly different than last time we had. Mm. From Chicago, like we, they do a lot of like uh, Kansas City style barbecue there and yeah. mixed with Memphis. So there's a lot mm. of baked beans there, a lot of sugar, brown sugar, and a lot of barbecue sauce in there, so. Yeah. I think I'd rather have Bush's baked beans. <laughs> I don't really like them. Kind of remind me of um, like watery, refried beans a little bit. Mm -hmm. I can imagine though, as part of like a cowboy's meal, where they just need some carbohydrates yeah. and stuff, yeah. they just get more calories in. Yeah. I can totally see that. I think for me, I don't know, maybe it's because I grew up eating those super sugary beans. I prefer this just because I don't, with like all this stuff where it is, has a little bit of sweetness in the sauce. Like the ribs, the brisket has a little bit of that sauce and kind of cake on there. Like I don't really want another sugary like side that's just like straight up Yeah, beans. fair enough. Uh, the slaw is different than other places also. Mm -hmm. It's like, like sesame it. seeds in the slaw. I've never seen that before in other uh, barbecue restaurants. And it's like a vinegar base too, so it's not super heavy. Mm -hmm. It's really light, which is perfect for the sandwiches like we we're making and stuff like that. It's weird because after we went to Salt like the first time and we were telling everybody we went, and everyone's like, but how is it really? You right. Know? Everyone's like, yeah, I heard it's like, you know, you're there for the atmosphere mm -hmm. and that. I'm like, yeah, this place is super cool. Exactly. But I honestly really do like the food here too because it's just so different than all the other barbecue places right. that are in Austin or Dallas or just what people know. Right. If you're after that craft barbecue experience, 
this isn't the place. Right. But if you're after like relaxed, like traditional barbecue style atmosphere and just a cool place to be, yeah, this is great. So if I were giving this place a score, like the environment, the ambiance would get really high marks. Right. The food would be mm, so so better than anything I've had in Kentucky. Right, yeah. I would um, say the same thing. It's better than like any barbecue I grew up eating in Chicago. Before all of the you know crab barbecue places open and someone was like, we're going to Texas and we're going to Salt Lake, I'd be like, I'm down. Also, the sauce I really like, yeah. especially the spicy sauce, different from just the regular brown sweet sauce yes. that I got used to eating as a kid. Because I thought barbecue when I was a kid was when my mom would put ribs in the crock pot and dump in like a bottle of yeah. sauce. It's all the uh, Sweet Baby Ray's and the Casey Masterpiece or whatever that yeah. sauce is called. Casey yeah. Masterpiece. Yeah. Casey Masterpiece, yeah. yeah. And if anybody watched uh, the Ronnie Coleman workout videos back in the day, he would douse everything in Casey Masterpiece barbecue sauce. Can't do without it. So I started doing it because I was like, I'll just get jacked like Ronnie Coleman if I ate yeah. this barbecue sauce. It didn't, didn't work. Have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't that work? It's not the style of barbecue that you're gonna get in line for at you know seven in the morning. Right. It's just a completely different thing and a welcome change. Because sometimes you want barbecue, but you don't want the like you know hyper rich, yeah. very salty, blow out your taste buds stuff that you get yeah. by waiting in line at Franklin or something like that. Yeah. The new style of barbecue now it's too rich for me. I can't mm -hmm. sit down and eat a half pound of barbecue and point. go back to work. I don't feel super heavy eating this. Like we got another full day ahead of us, but there's not really No, I actually, I'm gonna walk out of here feeling great. Yeah, right. Which is more than I can say for a lot of the just phenomenal barbecue places. Yeah. You walk out and you're like, oh, can somebody just roll me to the truck? Right. It's just a different thing. It's super cool. And like walking by, like, I don't know what they actually call it, but the meat shrine up there is super cool. I posted kind of like a mini write-up review on Patreon uh, of when we came earlier. And then somebody had a comment saying, it was, I'm not going to get it exactly right, but it was something like, giving a bad review to Salt Lake is like pushing your grandmother down the stairs. It's like, it feels really bad, but they're saying, but it's not that great. It's not supposed to be like those places like Franklin. Yeah. The, the, honestly, for me, the biggest issue I have is that this brisket is $34 a pound. And if you're paying $34 a pound for brisket, I want it to be that, like, you know, meteorite bark on the outside, packed with flavor, smoky, juicy, just like blow your mind. And it's just, this is not what it's designed to be. I would equate it to, you know, going to like a steakhouse, right? Yeah. Where you're getting the same cut of meat at one place or another, but they're charging, they're charging the same price because the price of the raw product is what it is, right? right. But if you're gonna pay that same price, you're ex you have an expectation for it to be a certain way. Yeah. I think this is one. And part of it, I think, is knowing what you're getting yourself into, like going to Longhorn Steakhouse versus going to Peter Luger. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not dogging Longhorn Steakhouse. Went there yesterday, as a matter of fact. But it just, you got to know what you're getting yourself into. And this is what your experience is going to be like here at Salt Lake. But it's important to know. It's like, for me, coming here and enjoying it is like 80% about the atmosphere and the feel that the place has and 20% about the food. This will be my last point, but I think the one thing that like kind of fixes it, like this is $34 a pound, and I think on the menu it says an all you can eat for like 32 bucks or something like that. So, yeah, you know, if you're gonna go for that Salt Lake experience so you can try everything and not yeah. feel like you're paying so much just for that one thing, like that would probably be the way to go. Sure. That's definitely the way to go. Yeah. Why didn't we do that? Because we have eaten a lot of barbecue. The idea of all you can eat just sounds wrong. So yeah, fair enough. Anyway, so it's a cool experience, guys. If you're in the area, don't worry, you're not going to have a huge wait. Come check it out. It's just super cool, yeah. and I would definitely recommend trying it. It's just an enjoyable experience for me. Yeah, I agree. I've been wanting to come to this place for a long time. Like, I saw this place on Food Network and Travel Channel when I was like 12 years old, and I was like, someday I'm going to go there. Yeah. And we're here. I mean, it's pretty yeah. awesome. Here are the pro tips. Definitely order the cobbler with the scoop of ice cream on top. We had that last time, and it is phenomenal. Also, go to the gift shop and you can get sauce to take home. But from the table, you can get like a quart of sauce to take home. So if you live anywhere close, you can take that home and have it. And it's cheaper than buying the bottled sauce. I think it's important for people who are barbecue people now who have gotten into it to understand like where the style of barbecue that we cook now is really coming from. Not to say that this is kind of what our barbecue is now, but it's important to see like what it was back then to understand the growth of barbecue and how it can continue to change. I'm a fan of all cooking meat with fire, 
uh, and this is just one variety. If you guys enjoyed this video review, hit the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Mad Scientist Barbecue. If you guys want to win the thousand gallon smoker on a trailer we pulled up with last time, click on the link in the description, go check it out. I hope you win it. And you can follow? You can follow me on YouTube at Joe Yim and also on Instagram at Knox Ave Barbecue. Boom, that's a review. We'll see you guys next time.